thank everyone who uh, decided to join us today. Um, again, my name is Emily Gover, and I'm one of the in-house librarians here at EasyBib. Uh, joining me today is my coworker, Maya Stevenson. She is actually on mute right now, but she will be speaking um, a little bit later on during today's presentation. Um, just a little, a couple of housekeeping things before we get started. If you have any questions during the event, um, you can either type your questions into the chat box or the Q&A box, either one um, is fine. We'll be addressing questions after the presentation and then I'm going to pass it off to Maya who will give you guys a live demo to show you how EasyBib um, and its features tie in with the Common Core. Uh, so we'll be addressing questions both after the presentation as well as after the demo. Additionally, we are recording today's webinar, so the, uh, we'll be emailing everyone a recorded copy of today's webinar. If you are interested in receiving a certificate of completion, if this is relevant to um, continuing education hours or professional development hours, um, you can send me an email. I'll provide that at the end of the webinar as well, and I'd be happy to get you a certificate of completion. So with that said, um, we can get started. We've heard uh, from many of our ECB users that their schools are now expected to incorporate um, common core standards into their instruction. And we feel that there are a number of ways that EasyBib School Edition can help you teach your students um, the common core standards. Whether it's helping students learn specific skills required by the common core, um, or helping them to facilitate critical thinking and collaborative skills students must acquire to be both college and career ready. For you who aren't too familiar with EasyBib, our school edition is a citation tool that also encourages correct citation formatting research and source analysis as well. We also have a tool called uh, Notebook, and what that does is it encourages and facilitates critical thinking and the synthesis and organization of research, which are both really important aspects of the Common Core. So let's take a quick look um, at the idea behind the Common Core standards. We just wanted to make sure um, the students in the United States were prepared for college level learning, and all of those students um, would be able to continue to compete with students around the world. So not only um, has Common Core been aligned with college and work expectations, but it includes rigorous content and application of knowledge through high order skills. Um, this includes built on strengths and lessons of current state standards, um, and they've been informed by top performing countries. So all students are prepared to succeed in our global economy and society. Um, and a lot of this is evidence and or research based. It's really where the school librarian comes into play and plays a really important role um, in ensuring that students are acquiring their common core um, skills. So all the participants that we have um, in today's webinar right now are either from New York State or New Jersey. So we just wanted to touch upon um, a couple of things regarding Common Core in each of these states respectively. Um, New York State uh, adopted the Common Core standards as of July 19, 2010. So they were one of the earlier states to have adopted it. Um, they also added their own standards to create um, the New York P12 uh, CCLS, which happened early last year in January 2011. Uh, has also outlined a transition plan so that implementation of Common Core standards will be completed by the end of the 2014-2015 school year. Um, the implementation schedule includes assignments for ELA, mathematics, and their state assessments such as uh, Regents, PART, uh, NYSAA, and NYS ESLAT. Uh, they love their acronyms. It's something I've learned from being educated in the New York State public school system. They love African. Uh, moving on to New Jersey. Uh, New Jersey adopted Common Core also in June 2010. Uh, they've been gradually phasing in the curriculum development since the 2010 and 2011 school year. Chances are um, school librarians in New York and New Jersey are at least familiar with Common Core, even if it's not um, to a great extent. But hopefully, this uh, presentation today will provide you with a little bit more uh, overview of that. So 45 states and three territories have adopted Common 
core, um, mostly for math and ELA, but many schools are still struggling to figure out how to implement these standards effectively into their curriculum. As a librarian, you know, you may be wondering what your role is in teaching these standards. Support research and encouraging student reading of increasingly difficult texts, of course, um, as well as reflection and critical thinking are imperative with Common Core. You can also play a key role by helping teachers select both texts and tools that can support their Common Core-based curriculum and lesson plans. So um, we focus on the English language arts anchor, uh, anchor standards for reading and writing. If your school has also adopted Common Core for social studies and science, many of these easy bid tools can also support instruction and learning that involves reading, synthesizing, and citing informational text. To support student projects involving EasyBib, you can of course increase the difficulty of the required text for readings, which we had just mentioned a moment ago, and also decrease the level of support that you provide with the student. Um, the way that we're going to set this up today, you're going to see the anchor standard relating to Common Core, and then discuss the feature or features um, that our school edition offers that relate to these standards. So you'll see anchor standard number seven, um, which can be found on page 35 of the Common Core Standards for English Language Arts and Literacy and History and Social Studies, Science and Technical Subjects, um, which all of this can be found on the Common Core's website. Uh, we can provide you with the link to that. All of the Common Core Standards are available online for your own analysis um, if you would like to go through uh, and get a really detailed overview of Common Core. In order to meet this standard, Students are able to integrate and evaluate content presented in diverse formats and media, including visually and quantitatively, as well as in words. Um, good researchers, of course, should feel comfortable exploring resources that go beyond just books and websites. Under librarian and teacher instruction, students should be introduced to a number of different media formats and encourage them to use um, these sources in their research projects so they can provide a deeper perspective. Uh, it can also help encourage students to use diverse source formats in their research. We have this tool called Bibliography Analytics, and what that does is it gives students' uh, students' bibliographies a score based on a number of different criteria, including the diversity of source types that they use in their works cited list. The part that you see here really brings the idea home for many students who might be more visually oriented, and they'll really get a better understanding of how diverse their sources are. Um, and of course, because students can cite 59 different source types with EasyBib, creating citations for all of these different media formats will be quick and easy for them. Writing for standard number four uh, requires that students produce clear, coherent writing in which the development and organization are appropriate to the task, purpose, and audience of their paper. Um, this process-based skill is often taught through teacher instruction, review, and student practice, but there are also a number of online schools that can help students organize their notes and ideas to create well-developed and organized writing. Our tool um, allows students to not only keep track of the information they've collected and the ideas that they've formed, but our dynamic workspace allows them to synthesize the information from multiple sources and easily um, organize their notes and their ideas all in one place. The individual note cards can be dragged and dropped on top of each other to create groups, which you can see here. Uh, and students can see how their research comes together to make up the main ideas of their paper. Not only can they um, pull different pieces of information from one source, but they need to be able to find common ground among different sources and group them all together in one place. On the right-hand side of the notebook space, um, students can create a dynamic outline. And here they can drag and drop their note cards into their outline so they can easily organize and rearrange their information as they see fit until it makes the most sense for their press and audience of their paper. Finally, we do allow students uh, to share notes as well. 
So with this feature, teachers and librarians have the ability to check and comment on a student's mastery of this skill before they hand in their finished product. The standard for writing, uh, number five, requires the students to develop and strengthen writing as needed by planning, revising, editing, rewriting, or trying an entirely new approach. Um, students should be taught to properly review the writing, you know, to avoid typos, grammatical errors, but also to improve the syntax of their paper. Um, but during the re revision process, they should also think about strengthening the argument and approach to their writing as well. So as I mentioned before, Easy Bib Notebook can certainly help stu students better plan out the, their ideas before they start writing, but we do also provide online guides for students to help them learn to effectively proofread, edit, and revise their writing. Writing under standard number six uh, states that students should, quote, use technology, including the internet, to produce and publish writing and to interact and collaborate with others. It's pretty obvious how easy this um, ties in with this. E of course, is an easy to use online platform that, through various project sharing features, enables students to easily collaborate on projects while strengthening their ability to use technology. So, as I mentioned before, you are able to share your notebook um, with other classmates or teachers or librarians. You can also share your bibliographies as well, and your bibliographies can be worked on by multiple students at the same time. So this really allows a collaborative environment, especially for group projects. Anchor number eight uh, requires that students should be able to gather relevant information from multiple print and digital sources, assess the credibility and accuracy of each source and integrate the information while avoiding plagiarism. Uh, unsurprisingly, EasyBib has many tools that help your students achieve all of these skills. Our teaching tools allow students to quickly and correctly cite multiple sources from uh, various formats. I mentioned earlier we offer 59 different types in total. And we also have a help section that gives descriptions of different source types so they can make sure that they're identifying and citing all of these different media formats correctly. Um, this just gives you a couple of screen caps of two different features. Um, you can see over here that this is where all of our 59 options are available. Some of them you can see here, you can cite things like a federal report, um, music or audio, the Bible, a blog or podcast. And our learn site feature that really shows students how citations are formatted and it really makes um, preventing plagiarism quite simple for the students. Evaluating and assessing uh, sources, our evaluation tool pops up every time a student cites a website on EasyBib School Edition. In these cases, we give them a hint about the source's credibility. We evaluated the top 5,000 websites on EasyBib under the criteria of credible, maybe credible, and not credible. Regardless, we always provide them with a list of criteria they should use when determining the credibility and overall accuracy of websites. It can also help students avoid plagiarism. It's something that we've talked about throughout much of this presentation so far, but just reiterate um, a little bit more. Our easy parenthetical citation and footnote generator makes citing these sources while you're, while you're writing both quick and easy um, so that the student is less likely to write their paper and then try to go back and fill in the information later. Um, which oftentimes can lead to unintentional plagiarism simply because they lose track of um, which information came from where, they may have forgotten to throw quotes in there, so they think it's their own writing when it's really not. Um, and in addition to the proofreading guides that we had mentioned before, we also provide guides to help students learn about plagiarism and how to avoid it. Okay, um, with the note cards in the notebook feature, students can link to the source citations with their research. So they can easily keep track of where they found their information, which makes um, it which really helps prevent accidental 
accidental plagiarism. And writing number 10, um, ask students to write routinely over an extended time frame. So we need time for research, reflection, and revision. As well as shorter time frames, such as a single um, thing or over the course of a day or two. EVIB can help facilitate both long-term projects by helping students keep track of their citations in one place, um, as well as their notes and their papers, all in our project section over here. Uh, shorter projects where students are really short on time, EasyBib can help students create accurate citations quickly so they can focus more on their writing and less on um, whether or not they're getting like capitalization and periods and all those sorts of things accurate. Online, um, you'll find some free resources that we've collected that may help you learn a little bit more about integrating Common Core into your school's curriculum. You may already be familiar with um, ASL standards, and ASL has created a really great resource to show where the 21st century learner skills match up with Common Core requirements. Um, and we'd be happy to send you these slides if you'd be interested in checking out these resources. We are going to be sending and check back on these sources at your own convenience. We've also created lesson plans to teach Common Core standards using EasyBib, um, and you can use these in your library instruction classes or share them um, with, your teacher, with your students' teachers as well. So that I have to show you guys today in terms of how EasyBib um, lines up with the Common Core. Does anyone have any questions? so far. Um, I'd be happy to take them now, or if you have anything that pops up a little later on, maybe while Maya is doing the demo, um, we'd be happy to address them then as well. Like we have any questions so far, um, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague Maya, who will be showing you guys how some of EasyBib's features tie in directly. Oh, wait, it looks like we might have one question. Okay. <laughs> uh, one of our participants, Debbie, who I actually met last week at the NJASL conference, says great presentation. It was very clear. Thank you much, Debbie, um, for your uh, positive feedback, as always. Um, I'm going to pass it off to Maya now. She'll be able to show you guys how um, easy those features work in a live demo and how this ties back in um, to Common Core. So just a couple uh, moments while we kind of uh, switch over the present privileges. You'll just want to um, unmute yourself whenever you're ready and we can get started with the demo. Um, can everyone hear me okay? I'm fine, Maya, so I, I'm thinking that everyone else should be able to hear you okay as well. Uh, great. Well, thanks so much, Emily, for a really great presentation, um, and thanks to our attendees for sitting in. Um, what I'm going to do is walk you through some of the elements that Emily showed you as screenshots. And I'm just going to put my screen up so that you are able to view it. And it just take a second to load as it tries to get my screen up for you to view. So um, just to get started, what I've done is I've already logged into an EasyBib user account. Um, one of the things that Emily mentioned was the ability for students to see their complete range of writing. When a student logs in, the first thing they do see is all of the projects that they have started in the My Projects space. 
Um, and one of the standards also talked about technology and collaboration. Um, so it incorporates that by allowing students to share projects with users and also with you, the librarians and the um, teachers. Anything that the student hasn't created but is a part of, um, so a collaborative project, is going to show up in the bottom in that student's shared project space. This will you'll go ahead and you'll be able to view those things that the students are working on. And with the projects, students can work in the bibliographies and they can also see the notebooks and soon they'll also be able to work in those notebooks as well. I'm going to go into a project that I have already created, um, and I'll show you, again, some of the tools that Emily has um, mentioned throughout her presentation. And so one of the standards, um, as she mentioned, is about the diverse format. And she had right in her presentation, EasyBib does support 59 different options, and the students can see all of those in total right on the top in the All 59 Options tab. Um, so what's great is that by being able to see the options, it helps students think of other places they might not commonly look. Whereas a student may generally stick to a book or a website, they can look at this list and find something that they think is interesting to them that will relate to the project they're doing um, and seek out something, and out a resource of that format. So letting them expand their horizon. And ahead in the website to get started. So when I do that, you can the first thing here that popped up is our source guide. Um, and this is a really neat resource because it helps explain the various source formats to students. Um, so again, helping them understand the diversity of formats. Um, and it also makes sure they have picked the correct form. So you can see a website article. Um, but there are a few other options. Maybe they are really looking at an online newspaper or an article from database, so making sure they distinguish between those. I can close that um, and get to my website form. At my website form, I'm just going to go ahead and auto cite this Wikipedia article. Um, so auto cite lets the student put a piece of information and we try to find the rest for them. First thing that'll pop up with a website you'll see is our website credibility. Um, and it's really important, and this is um, very clear in the standard that, that students need to be able to assess the credibility and accuracy of, of the sources that they are using. Um, ZBib has looked at the top 5,000 most cited resources. We give the students an indication of the credibility for those. It's credible as is green, maybe credible in this, no, not credible in red. And then more shows you the entire criteria set that we use to evaluate these sources. Questions. So what's really great is for source students are already familiar with those that are most popular. The students can reuse that as a place to learn. It gives them a model um, for how their evaluation is done. And then as they branch out to more diverse sources, sources that are less popular and have not been evaluated. Have an understanding of exactly how to use this rubric, exactly what elements they're looking at, and how to answer these questions. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and close that for you. Um, one neat thing about EasyBib doesn't tie to um, anything in particular, but we do offer an article recommendation again, helping students expand their horizon, um, expand the diverse formats that they are looking at, and that's for Wikipedia articles in particular. Below, um, when I go into any of the forms on EasyBib and click in the field, our Learn site helps show the students the citations and the rules related to the element that they're working on. So the capitalization rules for my article title, you know, where this element goes. And this contributes to having them um, have a clear understanding um, of the process. Um, and at the bottom, I'm just going to go ahead and create this citation. And it's generated and added into our bibliography. One of the things that Emily mentioned during her presentation was our bibliography analytics. Students can go ahead and click on Analyze once they've added a couple of sources into bibliography. 
and she gives their bibliography a general score. The idea is really um, to help them understand how librarians and instructors view their work and give them the opportunity to make improvements. Um, we look at diversity of source types, which um, ties directly in with one of those common core standards. Um, we also look at database usage, um, website credibility, again, tying directly into um, the common core standards, making sure they understand the credibility and accuracy of sources. And we also look at their number of source types, explanations for why we think these things are important, and I had students' advice on how to improve. But the most helpful thing here, I think, for the students in particular, is the pie charts. Um, students, they seem to be very visual. So having these pie charts make it really easy for them to understand and identify where they can make improvements um, and go back and make those changes so that they are better research and help learners learn the skills that they need to acquire. Just going to back to my bibliography. Sorry, it's taking a second. Once um, we talked about collaboration, when a student does share projects with others, um, if they have it shared with um, the librarian or with their instructor, you do have the ability to make comments on their work. So helping guide them in the right direction, also giving you the chance to see if they're understanding the various skills required um, to complete the research assignment that they are doing. Um, and see that underneath each citation there is a comments link. Um, so all you need to do is click on that comments link, and you can go ahead and fill in whatever comment you need. So, for example, at a lot of school students may not be allowed to cite Wikipedia, or they may have to provide two additional sources. Um, so here I'll tell them to find another source. Um, save the comment. The student's able to see that. So really, um, making good use of technology and encouraging that collaboration. And those are a couple of the quick things that Emily mentioned in her presentation in our bibliography element. Um, there's lots more to our bibliography. Um, and if you are not a subscriber and would like a full webinar to go through all the elements, we can do that for you at another time. But I'll switch into our notebook space um, so I can show you a couple of the other elements there that tie directly into our common core. I have a notebook I've already started. For the sake of time, I think that's the quickest way, um, the best way to show you how this area works. Um, this space originally was based on the concept of taking notes on index cards, which um, that traditional way of organizing, we find that librarians and teachers really liked, and they found that it was really effective. But today's students are so tech savvy that they can often be resistant to those traditional ways of doing things. So we've taken the notebook space and put it online. Again, helping students know that their writing is organized and coherent. Um, the way they do this is create individual note cards still. Um, you click New Note here at the top. Or like anywhere in the workspace, each note you're able to give it a title. You had and link it to a source, so helping students understand that they do need to organize their work, make sure they understand where the sources are coming from. Um, so what's already in your bibliography, and then it breaks it down into three areas: to quotes, paraphrasing, and commenting. Um, Students are learning those skills, um, able to really measure and see um, if they have a good understanding of the difference. Um, and then there are organized options. Um, so again, that writing standard that's all about having organized and coherent writing, um, having organized and coherent notes um, that you use to build a line and you later use to build your um, writing is exactly how students are going to get to that. Um, so there's the need for students to create groups, to create tags, and to even color code some students. They do seem to be um, much more visual than students in the past. I'm going to select a color, and I'll go ahead and save a note. You can see it pops right up in my space. This whole area is dynamic, and it makes it easy for students to rearrange and explore how different notes and elements relate together. 
Um, you can click on things and drag them around. I can put these two note cards together if I think they belong to one group. We'll click at the top. You can give that your name. Um, say maybe I think this belongs here. Um, also, is easy for students to unreorganize organize things as they get a better understanding. Um, so let's say I decide this red note card really doesn't belong. Maybe it needs its own group. I can click on the plus sign here and pull that note card out. Um, so I'm start a new group for that information. Um, so really making sure that they are organized and they see exactly how all the information they're collecting does relate. Uh, there gives the ability to really go ahead and synthesize that well. As far as making sure their writing is coherent, um, right now we're in the visualized view, but we also do have a list view that lets you read through all of your information. And I think this is a great place that enables students to do exactly that. They can go ahead and view their information based on the groups or the tags that they put them to. So if I look at what I have for this particular group, I can read through and make sure it does make sense that all of these things do relate before I move on. You can also go ahead and incorporate their notes that taken directly into their outline. Line space on the right hand side. You can double click to clear your thesis, and then you can add new bullets using the navigation bar or pull note cards directly to that space. So you can see it starts to build my outline for me. And this, again, area is really dynamic, making sure that students have organized their information well. Um, how standard about you know, reworking and rewriting, they can easily do that here. Um, this gives them a really clear roadmap for when they do get to the start of writing. Um, as far as collaboration goes with this area, when the notebook is shared, um, other group members or the librarians or can view the notes, they can also go ahead and leave comments. So making suggestions on how to improve the flow of their paper or relabeling them to you as a resource, ask you questions um, you know, if they are struggling with anything. So creating that collaboration piece. Um, so that thing I wanted to go ahead and show in the notebook space. Um, last thing I did want to share. And Emily um, did share a, sheet, a screenshot of these. We have some really great guides in our citation guide area. Area has guides showing students exactly how to go through and create their citations for MLA, APA, and Chicago. Um, what I think is more interesting here is our research and our writing guide. So this helps students understand not only the research process, but also the writing process, uh, how to brainstorm, how to research, how to outline. Um, one of the common core standards mentions, um, again, proofreading and revising. Um, we do have a guide for that, so helping students go through and understand um, the process of that if they need some assistance and they are away from the library or away from a teacher. Uh, this also makes a great resource for you. Um, you can direct students to this uh, and use as part of your classroom materials. Uh, so that is everything that I wanted to go share. Um, at this time, I'd be more than happy to take any questions regarding um, anything on the site that you'd like to see. Um, also, I'm sure I would be happy to take any questions or in Common Core at this time as well. Thanks, Maya, um, for running through that quick live demo. I hope everybody um, found it useful to see how easy those features do tie in with a lot of um, the fundamental skills that really tie in um, with Common Core. We have um, a couple of questions. Uh, one person asked, uh, will EasyBib or its notebook feature work on an iPad? Um, I, well, there's a couple of points um, to make with this here. With EasyBib, we do have um, a free app that you can download for iOS. Um, it's basically an iPod touch with a camera, an iPhone, or an iPad. Um, and what it does, it's a free app to download, and you can scan barcodes on physical books um, using the camera on the device, and it'll extract the ISBN uh, data 
and put it into a citation which you can then mail to yourself. Um, in terms of easy um, and notebook working on an iPad, I believe, um, maybe if I'm wrong, but I believe uh, that you can use easy and the notebook dynamically um, using uh, an iPad, right? You absolutely can. Um, it's really neat, especially with the note card space, because you can, you know, use your finger to click on a note card and drag them around and make those groups and organize your information. Um, so, if you do have iPads in your school, um, all they need to do is open the browser and go to EasyBib just like they would on the computer. Great. Um, I was going to ask, should I contact to learn more about? School if you are in New York State, um, they should probably contact you, right, Maya? Yes. I'm more than happy to put my information in the chat as well. Um, if you're in New Jersey, you can contact me as well, but we do have a designated person for the state of New Jersey that is not me, and I am more than happy to pass along your information. Yeah. Thank you. Have questions? You can always ask your sales rep. Or if you happen to hop into this webinar and you're not a current School Edition subscriber, um, you can reach out to me, and I can help you or direct you to the correct person. Okay. Awesome. Um, I'm also going to make a point to put in my email address as well. I mentioned at the beginning. I saw that there were a couple people who came in a little later in, um, in during the the webinar today. We are running certificates of completion, so if that's something that this webinar would be appropriate for, you can send me an email. Um, I just put it in the chat box. It's emily at Um And uh, if you want to put your uh, email in there as well. Oh, whoops, sorry. I sent that. Sorry, Debbie. I sent that to you personally. I meant to send that to everybody in the, the webinar today. There we go. Uh, emily at ImagineEasy.com. And Maya, if you want to put in your email address there as well, that would be awesome. Um, so if you guys have any questions, if you'd like to see this presentation again, we're sending out recorded copies of the webinar, but if you'd just like to see the slides, we can get that to you as well, um, as well as certificates of completion. Um, one other person said, do you have any training for teachers on EasyBib? Um, yes, we offer, I believe it's bi-weekly or weekly webinars um, that provide a thorough overview you kind of like what Maya went through, but a little bit more detailed than that, on all of the features um, that the school edition offers and how it can be used um, in the library and in the classroom as well. Um, it, we have a pretty high attendance rate, and I know a lot of the time, half the battle for school librarians is to get teachers on board with using the tools that they've worked so hard and used their budget money to purchase. Um, so if that's something that your teachers would be interested in. We offer them pretty frequently, um, so and we can always send out a record copy as well if they'd like to watch it um, at their own convenience. Hey, Emily, I can show them exactly where to find that professional development schedule. I'm going to unpause my screen. Um, where uh, webinars where it's open enrollment for teachers and librarians, um, you can actually find that information in our educator blog. There is a section. Educators of professional development webinars, where we will post our schedule. For the month of December, we're running it weekly uh, up until the week before Christmas. Um, so if you have uh, any teachers that you'd like to hop in um, and they may have some time this week, you can go ahead and feel free to share this with them. Um, so I wanted to show you guys where that was. Thanks. Um, we have a, another question uh, that just came in, and um, the question is, how do you share the note cards? So we had been talking about, uh, you know, how like the collaboration is such a key part of Common Core, um, and she was just curious as to how you would share the notebook um, so that others can view uh, your so that others can view the note cards and outline that you've put together in your notebook space. Problem. That is a great question, and I've got some time. I'm more than happy to share that. Um, so what happens is when you share the project, that's exactly where you um, the, all the project elements get shared: the bibliography, the notebook. As well, so let's just go back. Um, let me just go back to the project screen. 
so I'll show you where you would do that. Okay, so once a student does create a product, you can see there is a share button here on the right hand side. All you have to do is select there in exactly who they need to share this project with and different levels of permission. So to view, to edit, and to comment. So if the student is sharing it with other students, they might just want the, their members to be able to edit and view it. Um, but for sharing it with a librarian or with their teacher, they may definitely want to make sure they check off the ability to comment so that you can leave feedback. And when you hit share, it automatically populates into your EasyBiz account. And that shares the bibliography and the notebook. Um, I hope that answers that question. And um, I do have another question about, but it looks like Lois has to go. Okay, oh, you want to email me about the question you had? I know you were having to stop, I'd be more than happy to um, get with you another time to answer that. Okay, well, thank you, Maya. Um, does anyone else have any further questions for us? If you do, um, you can type them in either the chat box or in the Q&A. Um, either is fine, we'd be happy to address them. Otherwise, if you have any questions that come up after um, today's webinar, you can always shoot us an email anytime. Um, so Maya and I will just hang out here for a couple more minutes. Um, if any more questions come in, we'd be happy to answer them. Thank you everyone uh, again for joining us today. Okay. Um, it doesn't seem like we have any more questions for today. Oh, hold on. Do we have one more? Let me see. Uh, okay. Uh, just a couple people sent messages saying that they're signing off. Thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We'll be sending a recording of today's webinar. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time of your day um, to a tech presentation. We hope that uh, it shed a little bit more light on Common Core and also how um, the school edition can, can tie in with that. So thanks, everyone. And uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us anytime. Have a great day.